This is the New Release Wednesday show for your NRW of uh, well, November 21st, 2018. Giving you the NEW, it's the NRW. And I'm, uh, again, not by my lonesome this week. We just filmed a bunch of shit. And my peoples came out to finally join me. We're here in my theater. I got my boy, Marky Mark. Not really nerdy. What's good, bro? Not much, man. And, of course, the squad. As always, not quite accurate cosplay. Bizarre Bizarre, Word Box, Giano, and Brandy. What's up? Yo. Peoples, peoples. I need coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long day. We've been filming a lot of content for y'all. And KPRMG, down with our uh, fellow part with Mark, uh, our NRW gaming crew, my man Lewis Bailey. How you doing, brother? Doing good, man. How about you? Good, good, good. Ooh. Be even better when I get y'all on Ryzen so y'all can really see us. <laughs> this is our first time filming up I here. Can see Next time you see us. I can see all of your electricity. You're good. <laughs> you can see everything, y'all. And as always, my girl Marianne behind the camera. Shout out to Marianne. Um, the lazy one. Dang. Inside joke. Dude, you yeah. still burning her? Still oh, burning her. Yeah. That's how I do. <laughs> Love you, girl. Says the guy sitting down. Hey! <laughs> all right, y'all. Says <laughs> the camera Dang. person sitting down. And we're, we're all here for a ride. <laughs> yes, yes. So, coming out, Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy, y'all. Um, the next films that I will have here that we'll watch in the theater. Um, first up, um, I've talked about this all year. Um, y'all saw me at the Smithsonian. Uh helping debut this film with a bunch of my amazing Asian uh, artists, friends here in the D.C. area. Crazy rich Asians, y'all. Um, I think you know, Marianne and uh, Brandy, you went out and saw it, too, yeah, as it well. Was, it was a good film, yeah. One of my favorite films of the year. Finally, as Asians, well, we getting that yes. representation. Did you see it? Did yes, you I represent? Did. Of course. Of course. You had to see it, man. Yes. Yeah, it was an ob obligation. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm getting sick. I'm getting He's fired. dying. I'm dying. Did y'all check it out, Crazy with Changes? I, I unfortunately have not. All right, well, now I'm going to have y'all check it out. Blu-ray DVD, we're going to catch it here. Um, for those that are, have not seen it, it's essentially a love story based on the amazing books by Kevin Kwan. Uh, this is actually the first novel. There was, uh, it was a trilogy of books um, about a Chinese-American woman meets the uh, her prince that she really doesn't know. Uh, who, this guy, he's not really a prince, but her prince, you know, you know, in, in love. Uh, come to find out he's really super rich. He's crazy rich. Uh, they fly out to Asia and, you know, they're there for a friend's wedding. And then eventually they fall in love. Amazing love story. And just a great and a true representation. Uh, one of the first major films in like 20 years with such an, uh, an amazing Asian cast. So let's, let's join the club. So great film. I uh, hope you check it out. That's out on Blu-ray DVD. And because I'm losing my breath, I'm going to throw it over to my man Mark with Kin. Yeah, so um, Kin, I checked it out over the weekend, actually. It's a lot more star-studded than the trailers would have led you to believe. Uh, Zoe Kravitz is in there. Michael B. Jordan, who's been in everything lately, is also in there. Briefly, but he's there. Uh, James Franco plays your villain, I guess you could say. Um, for, has anyone else seen it? Kin? Okay. So, it's a sci-fi movie, I want to say, but Based. I need one of y'all. I'm talking about. <laughs> so, sci fi movie taking place in the real world. I'm not entirely sure where it's set. Uh, basically, this kid finds this interesting looking box, which turns out to be a plasma gun. Um, so, it's, it's a wild ride. Uh, Zoe Kravitz plays a stripper. So, if you need any more on that, um, should I be taking a break? No. Well, he's out. Keep going. I keep going. Keep going. All right. So, like I was saying, it's a crazy ride. Um, definitely check out Ken if you're into sci-fi that's not heavy sci-fi. Looks dope. It looks like this kid got like this major special weapon. Yes. yes. And then all of a sudden, like they're coming after him. But my girl Zoe's in there. Yes. I love Zoe for a long Me time. Too. Oh my gosh. The product of Lisa Bonet yeah. and uh, Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz. Oh my goodness. Oh. Woo. I can hear their pants rising right now. Hey, Gianna, <laughs> watch, watch it. Uh, also out this week is Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. You checked it out, Lewis? Yes, definitely saw this when I came out in theater. I don't know if anybody else has seen it. No, nobody, no Jurassic World. Oh, no, bro. Oh, my God. Did not Man. check this one out yet. Must be that old, but the, anyways, uh, <laughs> definitely a great, <laughs> a little bit. A little it, great it's right kind of there, great there. Yeah. Just, just nothing up here yet. Yeah. Uh, it's a great ride. Uh, basically, this is a continuation from Jurassic World. Um, they're coming back to the island. The island is going through 
a volcanic eruption. So there's a political government of debate about do we allow these animals to die or shall we save them? And uh, there is a lot of talk. Our heroes go in to help save some of these animals and adventure begins from there. Um, when you see the trailer, it kind of almost looks like this is going for a Jurassic Park Part 2 or a Jurassic Park Lost World vibe. It is not. If you saw um, uh, um, Jurassic World, you're getting the same thing. It's still a lot of fun to watch. Chris Pratt is great. Um, the female that was also with uh, Chris Pratt is great. There's only one character that I did not like, and uh, I don't know his name, but he plays the techie in the group. Mm -hmm. He's a little bit over the top annoying, but other than that, everybody else is really great. Uh, they show a brand new bioengineered dinosaur that is pretty, pretty, pretty awesome to see. And I'll say the best character of the film is the hammerhead dinosaur by far. It's oh, the yeah? most hilarious moment in the yeah. film. It is the best dinosaur in the film. So, Interesting. Uh, I'd say check it out. All right. I heard it didn't do too well in theaters, and also partly that there, this whole new Jurassic World is going to be like a trilogy. So this is kind of like the in-betweener film, and there's going to be another Jurassic World after this, and it kind of left you hanging a little bit. Is that true? Yeah, uh, a little bit, kind of, yes. And, and a lot of that stems from this had a very Lost World vibe. When I saw the trailer, mm -hmm. I'm like, I feel like they're going to do Lost World all over again, and I feel that was what a lot of people's reactions were, mm -hmm. which probably hurt the film. Mm -hmm. And I think also some people coming from Lost World felt it was the same story being retold, which it was, but I didn't mind that because Jurassic Park is a wonderful film. Yeah. It's a great adventure movie. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what you're getting here, just minus the Lost World. And it does end off on kind of a cliffhanger or mm -hmm. it keeps it open for continuation so you could definitely add on a third part yeah i don't know exactly where they would go with the story but there is potential to keep it going gotcha so so if you're a fan of the franchise it's a still a solid film if yeah you're a fan of the it, yeah for for your jurassic park collection mm -hmm. definitely a keeper all right sounds good um, another film that is out this week on Blu-ray DVD digital copy, uh, Blind Spotting. Shout out to Jesse Fresco who did a great review of uh, this film for the new review on our channel. Um, it's uh, about a man, uh, a black ex-con who's on probation. He witnesses a murder happen right in front of him. And because, again, he's an ex-con, he's on probation, he's afraid to say something. Um, he sees essentially a white cop kill this guy right in front of him. And so, you know, kind of, you know, the mental, you know, linguistics with that, you, you know, you want to say something, but you're afraid. And then he also has this white friend who wants to be a rapper and just kind of, you know, that, you know, the black and white relationship and, you know, also racism in general. That's, you know, very prevalent in our society mm -hmm. and, and all that. So, you know, just that mental linguistics and how can people still coexist? And when people change and life changes and that. So uh, from what I understand, it got a rave review from Jesse. Um, I heard that it won the countless awards as well. I'm super excited to see this one. This is definitely what I'm picking up. So Blind Spotting. Check that out. Uh, highly recommended by our man Jesse Fresco. Also out on Blu-ray DVD digital copy, we have Little Italy. Uh, basically a romantic film uh, comedy with uh, Hayden Christensen that we know from Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, and goodness. Emma Roberts uh, that we know. What was that show on Fox? It was like a kind of like a horror show. Uh, Scream Queens. Scream Queens. Oh, I oh. love Scream Queens, and I loved Emma Roberts in that. If you have not seen that, I I suggest it. It's it's cheese. Did you watch Scream Queens? No, Scream Queens. I, I, I did not. Oh my god! And she was just so. I did not. So good as just this bitch ass character. <laughs> she was just <laughs> evil and just awesome. Um, so check out Little Italy if you want a romantic comedy. Um, also out uh, a remake, uh, but they did a live version of it. A lot of uh, films recently have been getting like live treatment on TV, which was weird. Uh, a Christmas Story Live. Did you are you guys fans of the original Christmas Story? Oh yeah. Did you want a live version of it on TV? <laughs> I didn't ask for it, uh, <laughs> but right. they gave it to us. Yeah. I don't know how well it did. I kind of tuned in briefly, but nothing can really take away from the classic that is Christmas Story. 
And to do a live version, good on you. But it was kind of awkward. It was weird, at least for me. So I don't know. Better as a film than a live play, I would say. Um, so that is out if you want to catch that. Um, uh, Fancy Nancy is a classic book I know I read as a kid. I know it's mainly for girls, and I was a book I read with my daughter. Um, but they actually did a cartoon version of it. Um, that's now out on Volume 1 DVD if you have kids that aren't so fancy. I said, well, if you're into fancy Nancy, well, I know Gianna's mm -hmm. into fancy Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> um, out in anime, uh, we got a bunch of anime. We have fireworks. We have the Morosa Mononokian, the complete series. Myriad Colors, Phantom World, the complete series, and Space Patrol Lulu, Lulu Co, the complete series. Uh, but a big thing, and I know uh, Mark caught it. Yes. Uh, Blood Blockade Battlefront and Beyond yes. season two is out. What so is that about? If you're looking to get into an anime and are not trying to sit there for 800 episodes, but want those crazy fights, definitely check this out. Bunch of fighting and yes. kickassery. So, their world and the underworld kind of clashed, and there's like rifts opening up. And he joined this. The main character joins an organization where they use their powers, and all their weaponry spawns from their blood. So that's why you got the blood. Yeah, it's it's interesting, but sounds like some demonic. Like yes, it is definitely demonic a little okay. bit. Okay. But some satanic demonic's not bad. No, okay. In intrigued by that. I know you're yeah. big into anime. I'm I'm an anime girl. I was just watching uh, Black Clover recently. Nice. Okay. Just started that um, right now. Thanks to this one, encouraging. Um, I heard that's on Netflix, right? No, no, no. It's on a different streaming. Okay, because I had a friend that said they just finished watching it. On it was on a streaming. You gotta find your own way of finding it. <laughs> oh, find your own streaming on it. Okay. Hey, I think yeah. it's on. I think it might be on Hulu. It, okay. Is it on VRV.com or Crunchyroll? It is. It is on VRV. Like those platforms. Verve. Yeah. Verve. Yeah. Let me check. Yeah. So Verve, yeah. Crunchyroll, Verve, Crunchyroll. Verve, 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 Verve. Yeah. I do. I do have Crunchyroll. Oh. All right. Yeah. So recommendation for Black Clover and as well as Blood Blockade, yes. Battlefront, and Beyond. That sounds interesting. Um, if you don't want to stay at home, um, we have a ton of movies coming out to the theaters this weekend because it's also y'all. It's Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. Thankful yep. for y'all checking us out. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great Thanksgiving. Um, but you have tons of movies that you can see with your family if they're still in town or if you want to just get away from them while they are in town. Feel me on that one? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes. Ralph Breaks the Internet from Disney Pixar. Yes. Um, wreck and Ralph is back. This is essentially Wreck and Ralph Part 2. Um, Never watched. This, what? Damn. Wow. Oh, You've seen the first one, right? I, Lewis? I, can, I can picture you. Yeah, this is not up your alley. <laughs> I saw the first one. Tell it's... us a little bit of brief synopsis on the first one. Oh, man, it's been so long. So, Wreck and Ralph, it's a, it's a lover's for... It, it's a... Oh, man. It's an animated film for people who love video games. Yeah. Basically, this villain in a video game does not want to be a villain... And he goes out trying to become a hero, and the hero of his game is trying to stop him to pull him back into his video game because he's breaking all these other video games wherever he goes. Uh, it, it is a fun comedy, a light-hearted comedy, but it, it is a really good animated film. Uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet just adds the internet to it. So, from the world of video games, now we are adding... The entire world of the internet. And they show off Google, Twitter, Urban Dictionary. Yes. They have, they even throw in all of the Disney princesses in there. We've all yeah. seen that scene, which mm -hmm. kind of looks very humorous. Yeah. Uh, so it's just bringing everything together. I'm hyped. I like Ralph. Yep. I already got my tickets. So I'm seeing it Friday with my family. Yes. Um, definitely checking that out. Um, so, in for, for Ralph Breaks the Internet, Break Ralph 2. Um, we also have Creed 2. And I can't believe my man Mark Ramada didn't even see the first Creed. Come on, man. Did you at least see the Rocky films? Yeah, I've seen two, I think. God, I'm dating myself with you guys. I, 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 saw, I saw the first one, and yeah. everybody's going to hate me. I was not impressed by it. What? I, I, did not like, I did not like Rocky as a character. I get the movie. I, I get the whole premise of it, and I think it's a very good story of... You, you do the best that you can to become the best and you work very hard on what you do in from a life of poverty to, you know, where you get and his whole thing. Rocky as a boxer is a terrible <laughs> boxer. He can't dodge a jab to save his life. I'm sorry. 
I'm, the, it's just you're gonna get so much hate mail now from my yeah. man. Gonna comment <laughs> so much hate this guy. But it is the absolute truth. We all know this. Have you all seen the Rocky films at least? If I, not pre, not since I was a child. But yeah. yeah. And I had to agree with what he's saying. He can <laughs> he cannot dodge a jab. A simple jab. It's an American yeah. tradition, people. Jab. That does not mean that he's a terrible boxer. It just means mm-hmm. that's his fault. Just throw jabs. <laughs> All right. This but, guy. Okay. okay. But anyway. I, I had some boxing training as a kid mm-hmm. when I was about 13, 14 years old. So that's the reason why I can agree with that. He was a horrible boxer. Just that, and I understand that it, it was it was a... For, the, for the, timing, the time the film was made, I understand that you could get away with something like that. But not, not so much. Yeah. You gotta throw a little bit in there. I mean, the, the very first thing uh, my boxing trainer Brad taught me: keep your hands up. Yeah, that's the first thing. Keep yeah. your hands up. And the thing was, he would have us do this. We would walk around during meetings like this, and if you dropped your hand down, he would punch you. Yep. <laughs> keep your hands up. All right, well, I walked in, walk in the door with my hands like this, like where is he? I know he's coming. All right, guys. <laughs> well, this isn't about boxing, but this this, it's this, about boxing. this is about boxing. So for the uninitiated. Rocky is a classic. Yes, he probably wasn't the greatest boxer, but he was the Italian style, you know. It was an American tradition out of Philly. Um, and it gave us to Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone that we all love now. And he gave us Rambo. Yeah. So, you know, we, we have to, in order to have Rambo, we had to have Rocky. Come on now. So, anyway, one of the bad, uh, his adversaries uh, in the original Rockies was uh, Apollo Creed, played by Carl Weathers. Uh, one of the favorites of mine and if you were a fan of the Rocky films he loves Apollo Creed so essentially the latest Creed film uh is part two to the first Creed uh the first Creed is about Apollo Creed's son played by Michael B. Jordan uh the original Creed is Carl Weathers Carl Carl Weathers actually in the the first Rocky films Creed died in the ring against Carl Drago um who was uh played by Dolph Lundgren um who was also one of our favorites from the Rocky franchise so we, we wouldn't even have Expendables, people. You don't know how important the Rocky films are, you youngins. These are youngins right here, people. Yeah. So uh, you have Apollo Creed. He died in the ring to Drago. Um, Rocky Balboa is now training Creed in the first film. Uh, young Creed becomes a boxer. And here we get now into Creed 2. Uh, so Creed 1 was a great film, which introduces uh, the young Creed. Creed 2, which is so amazing, is that we're now seeing young Creed fight against Drago's son. That's what's like the major selling point. And this, his father died in the ring against dude's father. Now he's about to face him. So, so, does that mean so this is basically face Drago. Yeah, uh-huh. this is like basically Rocky Three. Yeah. Hey, okay, moving on. <laughs> my, my people are leaving me. So three, two. I guess they're not taking out. But you know what? Me and Marianne are gonna probably catch it this weekend, right, Marianne? She feels me, although she's lazy. Anyway, love you too. Um. <laughs> also out this weekend, Robin Hood, Teron Edgerton that you know from the Kingsman films is starring in this along with Jamie Foxx who is playing Little John. Um, but before I say any more about this film, I know my man Giano has something to say about another Robin Hood film. No, no, no. I have something to say about this Robin Hood film. Okay, what do you got to say about it? So I... I didn't know much about it coming out, um, and so... It kind of came out of nowhere. It, it did. So over the last yeah. couple of days, I've actually looked into it, because I'm like, okay, if we're getting another Robin Hood film, I, I want to know what's going on. And what's the best way to put this? Um, it's boring. If you've seen Arrow, the show, anywhere from season five... The costume, now, yeah. No, no, no. Just in general. You pretty much got the synopsis, because oh, really? it's, it's upstanding citizen by day... Vigilante stealing from the rich at night. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so you oh literally gosh, yeah, you so ripped right. off you ripped off Batman and the Green Arrow, the, the live action Green Arrow at least, because you know, shit was different. But even so, even in the comics nowadays doing the same thing. You borrowed the exact same formula and then you neutered it and perverted True. it. One, it's not even technically little John, it's just John. He's actually two different characters combined. Oh really? By all technicality, yes. Uh and it's just from from what I everything I've read so far, the little bit I've seen, I'm looking at this. I'm just like, stop, please, <laughs> please stop. But well, isn't the whole premise about Robin Hood stealing from the rich and giving to the poor? Normally, yes. But on this one, right. they said that they're going to do something different. They're going to because actually, I think at the be- if I remember correctly, at the beginning, the narrative at the beginning says 
you know, you've heard all the stories, you've heard all the myths. We're gonna tell you the real story of Robin Hood, and it's the exact same fucking story. <laughs> the only difference is, is now they're also bringing about, like, they're bringing different aspects of time in there, and you've essentially got, you know, Jamie Foxx playing a neutered version of Django. Ooh. And the the thing when I looked at the trailer, I wasn't finesse. I wasn't like amazed. Like, oh, okay, it's another Robin Hood thing. Yeah. The only difference is like he does his robbing at night, which makes him more of a thief. Yeah. Than, and which also makes sense. And you also see that in some of the other Robin Hood films, even the Disney version, stealing from King Richard at night, which is the best in the whole movie. But the problem True. that I see with this trailer is that it looks very dull boring, modernized. Yeah, yeah, that's basically what it is. In a fan, in a, in a old time fashion, and it just looks unappealing. That, it's like it's like they wanted to they wanted to recapture a Knight's Tale. Yeah, and failed miserably. All right. At least that's what I've I the yeah. clips I've seen and a little bit I've read. That's pretty much what it is. It's like you tried to do a Knight's Tale again and failed miserably. Yeah. Well, it's it's like you you have. In a gamer sense, you have Robin Hood, and then when he puts the mask up, the first thing that came to mind is like, oh, thief. Okay, now you're going to rob houses as yeah. a thief, and then you're going to take the mask down and shoot yeah. your like Robin Hood. So you have, yeah. Brandy, what you got? I, I just have one comment, because you mentioned A Knight's Tale. Yeah. I have one big gripe about that movie. Mm. The costuming was historically inaccurate. And I think it's very inaccurate on this one too. I will rage if I see this. Yeah, it looks very modern. I'm, like I am, I am a co- like. It's it's been modernized. Yeah, they're trying Wait. to tell a modern way of storytelling. Marianne is about to talk from off camera. Yes, you were does. put off by the costumes in a night's tale <laughs> with David Bowie in the background. I mean, him being I, in the I, background was fine. Him being in the background was fine. But, but the costume, okay. I, I, I've done historical costuming. I've done some historical costuming for around that era, a little bit after that era, more of Elizabethan style. But it, I, it, I sit there and I look at some of the costuming and I am raging because it is so inaccurate. I can understand they put more bright colors into it just to make it pop a little more because they didn't have bright, a lot of bright colors back then. They kept it a lot of dingy because it didn't show the dirt as much. But the inaccuracy. But here's the thing. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, how do I get pulled into this? Uh, what I'm trying, what I'm trying to say is, I don't think they were going for any real accuracy to begin with. I mean, she's I, right. I mean, they had you know the trumpets playing. You know, we will rock you. That is true. <laughs> you know, so I, for so for me that that's why I was like, why would you be angry? There was nothing accurate about this at all. No, you know, but, but it's it's costuming thing for me. Yeah. The, the other thing is, when did that movie come out? Was that like the late nineties, early two thousand? Early two thousand. Right? Early two thousand. So also in that time period, you're also seeing movies from the the old historical movies, kind of with this modernized sense. And I think that's when I think it was nineteen ninety eight that we had Romeo and Juliet come out with that with Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. With that one song Thank that everybody you. would not stop playing on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a modernized retelling of that. And A Knight's Tale was kind of like, let's bring medieval, brighten it up, and kind of try to make it hit for today's generation. And I feel the same with you. I didn't like the movie. I, I don't think it's terrible from all the terrible films I've seen, but it's not great. <laughs> did it did it destroy Keith Ledger's career? Amazingly, no. Surprising. Surprisingly, no, it didn't. And, you know, I think that's a really great thing it didn't because, in my opinion, I don't think we would have never gotten one of the best Jokers ever made. All right. We didn't get a good Joker. Oh! oh. I would right. fight anybody to the death on that. I'm sorry. Just to say this real quick, a little quick note. He was not a good Joker. He was a good villain. That was not the Joker. Wow. I was right. the yeah. controversy in this issue he was episode of now in RW. But he did, he did damn good acting in it. Just wasn't that character. We're going to have to save that for another discussion. I like that one. I will fight. This guy. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Also out. <laughs> so Robin Hood, if you're going to cop that, check that out. That's out this weekend. Uh, also in limited release, we have The Favorite, uh, starring Olivia Coleman, Emma Stone, Rachel Weisz, and Nicholas Holt. Uh, basically, Queen Anne set in 18th century England. Uh, and them coming close together. We have Shoplifters, a uh, crime drama uh, about a family of small-time crooks who take in a child they find on the street. 
Uh, amazing Asian cast on that too, so I'm happy about that one. Uh, Becoming Astrid is a biography, drama, biopic on Swedish writer Astrid Lindgren, the author of numerous child books and the creator of Pippi Longstocking. It stars Alba August, Trin Dyrum, Mary Bonif, and yeah. Bjorn Gustafsson. So uh, that is also, uh, that's what is out on uh, theaters. We talk about what's out on Blu-ray DVD. And then uh, for those that didn't catch it, uh, tune after this. Uh, we have a brand new episode of Respawn. Yes. Uh, would you talk about in the new new episode of Respawn? Xbox, PS, or Xbox going discless, uh, PlayStation dropping out of E3. It is award season for gamers, so come check that out. And uh, if you want to know what was also released this week, uh, Mark and Lewis uh, dropped a new episode of NRW Gaming. So thank you, Lewis and Mark, for that. We got my girl um, Brandy Wordbox with a new episode of Web Spots. Web Spots is back. And then my man Giano and I also gave you some picks for the week. All the material, man. We've got a lot of stuff coming your way and much more. And any other comments before we sign off, y'all? No, no, no. Um, tell us, well, you know what? Tell them where they can follow you guys. Uh, everybody uh, give your handles, Twitter, IGs, and then I'll have one more word before we get, get out of here. Yeah. Not Quite Accurate Cosplay, bring, uh, bring it, start it up. All right, so you can find us at Not Quite Accurate Cosplay on Facebook and Instagram. Find me on Instagram as Wordbox with two X's. And I'm Bizarre Bizarre over on Instagram. Don't find me on Facebook because I'll block you, but you can't find me on the Wastelands of Fallout 76, and I will shoot you while wearing a dress. <laughs> uh, Holy Marcellus, you can find me on uh, twitch.tv uh, slash marcellus995. I do all my game streaming on there, going through my Steam library of 700 games, trying to beat them one by one, uh, and hopefully I get through the list. You can find me there. As well as on Twitter as uh, uh, KPRN Gaming, you can find me on there. So drop me a like or throw me a comment. Let me know what you want to see. Anywhere you can find me, you can find me as not really nerdy. My man, Marky Mark, uh, Marianne, did you say anything up yet? Or are we waiting until 2019? 2019. She's off the grid. She's off the grid, y'all. Um, I am Patrick, Patrick Strange.com, at Strange since nineteen seventy seven. At Temple of Far East. The show is at the NRW and at New Release Wednesday. Um, but before we go, I wanted to give one last word of love out. And again, this is Thanksgiving weekend. Thankful for y'all, my squad. We doing it. Have a great Thanksgiving. I hope y'all are having a great Thanksgiving. If you don't have a place to stay for Thanksgiving, come on over, man. Y'all are welcome, man. Um, we do this big up in this house. So uh, thankful for y'all. Um, last week, we lost a great Stan Lee. Uh, we kind of dedicated our episode to him when we left off uh, with Excelsior to him. Um, we're not going to, you know, hate to bring the mood down again, but, you know, death is part of life and we're just going to celebrate life. Stan Lee left, left us with a lot of great material. Um, uh, something on a more personal note, I want to dedicate this particular episode. Um, I met a guy who's very much like myself uh, at a convention uh, that was started in the area called Spartacon. Uh, it was a convention dedicated to fans of the show Spartacus. Um, this guy, uh, also, I worked with a, a, on a Star Wars film with him. He was an actor as well. He was a stuntman as well. I don't know if y'all know that, but that's what I also do on that. But a lot of y'all already know that. Um, but beyond that, he was just a great person. Uh, him and his uh, group, the DC Stunt Coalition that he's a part of, performed at the Spartacon convention. And that's where I really got to know a guy by the name of Jonathan Henderson Hendo. Um, he passed away this past week um, from something which really bothers me. Uh, uh, he asthma. Uh, he had a you know medical condition, um, and uh, he you know the he had prescribed medication. But a lot of times, and what's the problem with us in the U.S. is medication is crazy damn expensive. And I don't think he had he couldn't really afford some of the other medications that he needed to take. And that kind of kind of led to beyond just the weather. I don't know if you have asthma, but with cold weather, that affects a lot of people with asthma. And so kind of all of that kind of coincided um, and we lost a great person this week. So I want to dedicate this show to Hendo, Jonathan Henderson. We miss you, man. Love you. And uh, to our prayers and condolences out to the family. But this is dedicated to you guys. All right, guys. Love you guys. Have a great Thanksgiving. Thankful for all y'all. And just go home and love your family and make sure you're getting all the right medication and fuck Trump. <laughs>
Rolling, rolling, sound, speed, action. Not yet. <laughs>